again a little play-in music for it take takes two. two. There it is. All right, I'm gonna do the shimmy coco box. Adrian Beltre is uh, 36 years old. Mm. 36 years old. We'll let you ponder that while we dig into take two. Things are different now for 36 year olds. Let's get into take two. It is everyone's favorite game here on Marsh and Milton, where we have two minutes to break Hang down. Got to take my dancing shoes off. Hottest topics here. of the day and get you updated on All everything right. around the sports world. So explain this go. to me because I will uh, read you, you and Louie have been doing this. I haven't. I will read you a headline. I will throw out a question to you. You will answer, and I will counterpoint. Are you ready, good sir? I am ready, Excellent. good sir. There we go. Beginning in joust, take two. Joust away. Lightning general manager Steve Izerman. Izerman, yeah. Would reportedly prefer to trade Jonathan Drouin to the West says he does not want to trade him anywhere inside the Eastern Conference. Fair or foul of Steve Eiserman to worry about what conference a young player ends up in when the guy just wants out? Uh, fair, because uh, as we found out, no loyalty on either side of the puck. Uh, no loyalty on either side of the ball. Um, you know, Players aren't going to be loyal to you, but it starts with the, with the team not being loyal to the players. Um, yeah, I think uh, one player can make such a difference. And if it happens to be the team that's going to beat you out for the playoffs, you're going to be weaker. That team's going to be stronger. I think that's fair. See, I understand this in the National Football League when you're worried about Brett Favre going to the Minnesota Vikings or trading a coach inside your own division. I mean, it's not like the Jets exactly cared about Rex Ryan ending up in Buffalo. But for a player, basketball is the sport where one player can singularly define you. You don't trade a DeMar DeRozan inside the division to go to Philadelphia That's right. or And a baseball right, player can so, too because they play the whole game. Exactly. Yeah. So hockey, free-flowing, the number of guys that don't are on the, the ice. play the whole game. Yeah. yeah. It's six forwards that are your top six and he would certainly be one of them if he developed the way that they're looking. I just don't know if you really need to worry about trading him inside your conference. Like, sure, inside your division, maybe. Am I, can I talk yeah. back? Can I talk back here? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, the, only, the only thing I would uh, say about that is the game since the salary cap for most teams say from 3 to 15 in the conference so much can be decided by one little thing right, right? and and that's maybe what he's looking at but there. even the way that the playoffs are seeded out now yeah right I, w- would you worry about a guy being in your conference not, who- not as much but, uh, what's going to happen here whoever makes the best offers getting him yeah my whole thing, though, is he hasn't even developed into a guy who's dangerous at this point. Well, that's a good so point. It's like if he was so dangerous, why is he doing in the minors? So you're like, why do we have this guy and we need to get him out into the West? I still we, think it's fair. Yeah, we don't want him to be here, but we're worried about him down the stretch. I find that interesting to me. Uh, next up, Giants CEO John Mara. Yes, you remember him as the oh, man who was snubbed. Tom Coughlin <laughs> decided to do the oh, woo too slow and walk <laughs> past him. Uh, he moved along down the uh, side of the press conference seats. Uh, He says that Odell Beckham Jr. should have been taken out of the Carolina Panthers game. Now, for those of you who do not remember, this is the game in which Josh Norman and Odell Beckham Jr. went crazy on each other. They were basically wrestling and punching each other. And when Odell Beckham Jr. took a blindside run at Josh Norman, basically tried to knock him out helmet-to-helmet contact, a lot of people said... Tom Coughlin lost his job in that moment because he didn't discipline a player, but he's also trying to win, and he didn't have any other good receivers on that team. So is this fair for Giants CEO John Mara after firing Tom Coughlin to go, yeah, I think you should have benched one of our best players when we were still had the opportunity to make the playoffs? Foul based on the fact that it's really a shot at the coach. It's fair. That's a fair sentiment, and I think we all feel the same way, that he should have been pulled out of that game. But that's not the guy to say it. Especially so after the interaction given he had the, with him Given the, the circumstances, because it's falling on deaf ears because of that circumstance. And second of all, who cares? You tell your next coach that. Yeah. Right? You talk about discipline. Like, where's I, the public part of that? We've already debated that in public. That thing was ripped apart. My problem with this is double-edged sword, and the only guy holding the sword is John Mara, and the only guy taking the stabs of the sword is going to be Tom Coughlin. So if you agree, you, if, you if, agree if, it's yeah, foul. Yeah, I do. Yeah. It's foul. Yeah. If you say that you should have pulled him, that you should have disciplined him in that moment, then you're saying my coach did a bad job and that's why I didn't want him to be a part of this team because he lost legitimacy. If you say, no, I think that was okay to leave him in, then you're showing that you didn't care because you were trying to win games at a point where you probably should have pulled the guy anyways because yeah. everyone was talking about it. There is no right answer if you are John Mara, but there's also no right answer if you're Tom Coughlin. Yeah, this has been this whole thing's been hard on the Maras. 
It's been very difficult on them. I'm very interested to see who ends up as the next head coach of the New York Giants because you're going to get a patient organization that's going to work alongside you. Yeah. But we'll see who gets that spot. Uh, next up here on take two, Canadians carry Price not expected to return until at least the all-star break for the Montreal Canadiens on a scale of 1 to 10, or perhaps 1 to, oh my God, no. <laughs> How scared should Montreal Canadiens fans be now moving forward in the season, even after trading Tukarski? For what you have in net and the slide you have been on over the Christmas break, how worried should they be to hear this I think this they headline? got a little bit of it back recently. I think not only the Canadians should be scared, but the whole country, because if they don't make the playoffs... Yeah, that's true. Well, that means probably Ottawa would, but... but you know, given the numbers, but if they don't, and then they're going to make the playoffs. I would be scared of this because I think, for this reason, I think you can pick up extremely bad habits when you're when you're playing under a different circumstance than than normal. And again, it could be this thing: we got to protect our goalies more. That could change everything. They're already having trouble scoring goals. They're going to start. They are, and they have been. Look at, I mean, they're not scoring goals when they play well. It's because they play when they win. It's because they play defensively. Yeah. And when you do that. It changes a lot of things. I don't think you're going to be able to turn that switch back on. Luckily, they'll have about six weeks to play with after that to, to see where they're at. I think they should be very scared. To me, this is almost like Damari Carroll. And I mean, I hate to always compare it back to the Raptors. But, Similar. But you know what you need in the playoffs. You're a team that has struggled to get over the hump in the playoffs just like the Raptors have. And you need to be able to get yourself into that situation where you can have your key contributors be con- key contributors at the right time. Carey Price has to be a league MVP in order for the Montreal Canadiens to be a legitimate Stanley Cup threat you bring him back you put him in the right situation and he's comfortable and he's healthy he's going to be as good as he was for you at the start of the season if he's banged up you rush him back what's the point you yeah, don't have a chance anyways you might as well lose an but extra five saying, games in the middle of the season are you saying what you said about Carroll that sometimes that kind of vacuum produces uh, uh, guys have to step up and he comes back to a better team yeah Maybe. I, I mean I think that's probably right about where they are at at this point let's move along here to number four and take two as it is uh, a story perhaps of uh A little bit of cold that reigns close to my heart here in the NFL is the Minnesota Vikings and the Seattle Seahawks. Despite being listed as questionable, Marshawn Lynch is expected to play on Sunday against those Seattle, or excuse me, against those Minnesota Vikings. Who rushes for more yards Sunday, Steve, in the Seahawks Vikings game? Marshawn Lynch or Adrian Peterson in the freezing cold? Adrian Peterson, because I think I think the Seattle quarterback will carry the ball a fair Mm. amount. That's why. And it's a very short answer. Sorry, but that's no, what I got. That's so. Teddy Bridgewater can carry the ball he a can lot too, for Minnesota, but, but right? you don't you don't count on him as much as Russell. Well, that's also not the and, kind of thing. It's not in their game plan. Yeah, Russell creates more outside of the pocket as and, well. And right? it's because, written into it. Yeah. He's it's written into it the is, playbook. It's built into what they do for that team, which I think is a little bit different than Minnesota. It's, yeah. it's strange, right? Teddy Bridgewater, everyone looks at him and they go, oh, he's a mobile quarterback who came out of a smaller school who wears a white glove and works in a system with a pretty good running back. Oh, he's RG3. Yeah. Nope, he's no. not, right? RG3 is different than Teddy Bridgewater, is different than Jameis Winston, is different than all those guys. Well, one difference between RG3 and Bridgewater is that Bridgewater's playing. Yeah, that's <laughs> so, true. That's, that's a huge difference right now. I'm wondering if... Boy, I think they got to be careful with Wilson here. You know, it, with the cold and those kind of, because the, the more you handle the ball and the more you're on the ground from being tackled, the greater chance you have of somebody stepping on your hand yeah. in cold weather, which is a whole different thing. Well, here's the uh, the reason that I pose this question is because I, I think whoever has more rushing yards in this game wins. wins because we, we looked at the statistics yesterday of freezing cold games throughout the years and what it has meant uh, in terms of rushing yards, the importance of it. If they can get Marshawn Lynch to have one of those playoff games like he did in 2010, I believe, against uh, the New Orleans Saints when they were playing at home, the whole beast mode run that everybody remembers, if he can have a day like that, he can be dominant, and I think that they can have the opportunity to be able to uh, run away with this thing. Louis, do we got, uh, we got one more? We got time for one more? Nope. That's it for take two.